When you're installing a solar array, you should always observe the safety protocols. That being said, whenever I talk about solar, I'll always have a solar installer or an electrician in the comment section talking about how people shouldn't DIY solar because it's so dangerous. And the truth is, it used to be. A completely disrelated fact is that two thirds of the cost of a solar array is the cost of installation, the sales commission, and company profit. So over the next two videos, I'm gonna show you the main safety protocol to observe, and then also a particular industry secret that makes it completely and totally safe to install your own solar. What do you say? You wanna uh, do some safety third? So most people think that if your solar panel is in the sun, it's gonna be making power. And that is true, ideally. <laughs> I took a safety class on solar one time where the guy showed us in the shop upside down with no direct sun on it, the solar panels that would go on your house were making 75% of the voltage that they would in the direct sun. So you just gotta always assume that it's hot. If you buy used panels, you may end up with no connectors on the end of them. There's just bare wire. So check this out. Wire nut, danger averted. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up. Let's go guys. If you buy new panels, they're gonna come with a, a type of connector on them, which we'll talk about in another video that makes it damn near impossible for you to ever short them out. So um, in most cases, if they're new panels, you won't have to worry about that. But with used ones, usually when they're taking them off the roof, they just cut the lines. So that's something that you might wanna think with. So a lot of people, when they DIY a solar array, they'll install the panels and then they immediately wanna start hooking up all the wires together. And that is something that will happen at some point, but it is not the first thing you do after you install the solar panels. Again, we're gonna do all the safety stuff from the offset. So when we make all our connections, all the safety is already in place and we don't have to worry about making those connections. So there's two main overarching safety things that need to be done. One is bonding, which we'll get into in a second. The other one, you may have heard one of your hippie friends say that they needed to go outside and touch grass. And the reason for that is they needed to have their, their electrical conductivity connected directly to earth. Your solar array needs to go outside and touch grass too. It's called grounding. So we're, we're gonna cover grounding and bonding in this video. Uh, I'm gonna try and make it as entertaining as possible. And that might mean by the end of this, I'm doing a little dance or something like that. You just have to stick around and, and see what happens. Or, or maybe I won't. It's a mystery. Grounding and bonding. There are different bonding and different grounding requirements by application, by area that you're in, by the code of the county that you happen to be juristized by. You just have to check with the authority having jurisdiction in your area to find out what they actually require. Because it's an RV size system, all I have to do is use number 12 wire for bonding, and then I can actually use number 12 wire if it's only 400 watts uh, for grounding as well, at least between the solar array and the charge controller, and then it changes. So the way I'm gonna do that, they make little doodads that you can just bolt onto the inside of the frame here, and then they have a lug, and you can run your, your grounding and bonding wires um, that way. Uh, I didn't wanna go buy those doodads because I already had a package of um, ring terminals, and so I'm just gonna make a little jumper and uh, use ring terminals because I already have that stuff and this wire, and I don't like spending money. So I've measured these out. This is how long of a wire we need between each one of them. So I'm gonna strip off about three eighths of an inch on all the sides of this green ground wire. And we're just gonna twist these bad boys up right here. If you're using 14 gauge wire, you don't really need to twist with line, uh, linesman pliers because you can do it with a wire nut and it'll make a good connection. But with 12 wire or bigger, you really need to twist with your linesman pliers. And a little trick with them is to put your pinky on the inside like that. 
Everyone's a critic. We got two new armchair engineers over there telling me I'm doing it wrong. Now I'm sure some tough guy is going to be like, I could turn three number 12s in a wire nut. I could sneeze on that connection and it would, uh, it would probably fall apart. What's up dogs? Go adventure. Go have fun. Go run and play and be dogs. Can you see that little thing in there? That's a, crimper, a crimping tool. It's not ideal because it's on the back side of the linesman pliers, but it's what I got. When you put these on, you'll notice there's like a little um, separation in the ring terminal. You want that separation to be in the round part of your um, crimping tool. A lot of people, that gives them trouble. And you just squeeze it. Now you got a really nice connection with that ring terminal. And we're gonna go on to the next one. Then you can always do the pull test and make sure that they're on there nice and, nice and tight. So anyway, here's our jumper. And that's gonna go from panel to panel to panel. And then off of the last one, we'll have another ring terminal with a ground that will run all the way back to the ground rod that we're gonna install in just a moment. Now, all four of the panels are bonded. Now, you'll notice I'm not making any other connections other than the ground connection. I'm gonna make one more long ground that'll go into a box that's gonna get mounted here. And then I'm gonna run wires from the charge controller, which is gonna be in that box over there. And it won't have any power run to it. So that when everything comes together, I make two connections with MC4 connectors. And then I will never have come in contact with any of the high voltage that everybody seems to be so scared of. And that's why you do all the safety stuff first. It seems simple, right? It is. Since I decided to say so many words about bonding, let's do grounding in the next video. I'll try to have it out tomorrow. As promised.